The mediator Moses wrote the law down in a book, according to the Bible. No one has ever seen the Father, the one representing God, the one who is this world has been created by, the one that met with Moses at Mount Sinai, was the same person Yeshua claimed to be. He said, I am the exact same words he spoke to Moses. So if Yeshua was speaking the truth, the law that was God's testimony was written by the mediating hand of Yeshua. He built an altar under the hill, and he built twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Yeshua rose twelve representatives to be the foundation of spreading the gospel of the new covenant. He asked them again to enter into the covenant of by free will, and Jesus would only ever accept free will. Only those who are willing to repent and to give their lives in his hands is the one that he would represent in heaven. He took blood and water and sprinkled it upon the words of the covenant, on the book of the covenant. Moses sprinkled blood on the people. Yeshua said that the people had to partake in his blood through the symbol of the wine, showing their acceptance of the covenant between him and them. They had to receive the symbol of the blood. Moses said, Behold the blood of the covenant. Jesus said the very same thing. He also specially elected 70 of the elders to see him as a witness to the rest of the people. And Yeshua also elected 70 of the people to be witnesses of him to all of Israel. But strangely, as he was fulfilling the symbols, he seemed to have left out a few parts. The law was written on Sinai, but seemed like it was missing at that time. If Ron Wyatt's testimony is correct, then Yeshua did fulfill these missing symbols as well. He did build an altar under the hill. He did sprinkle blood and water on the words of the covenant, the very same words the mediator had written down earlier. To do the act Yeshua did, to be a mediator, he would have to be without sin as no priest that was unclean was accepted, and he would have to bring reconciliation with a sacrifice without blemish. He would have to make a covenant with the people on earth to be able to take his blood into the sanctuary in heaven as a substitute instead of the sinner. So in heaven there is an ark with the law of God in it, the one that the ark on earth was a copy of. It's important not to confuse the two arks. So why would Yeshua confirm the covenant above the earthly ark? You see, the sanctuary was built as a way out, the covenant as a way into the way out. We cannot have a mediator take our blood into the most holy place without first acknowledging God's law, that it is just that we have sinned when we break it. It's through confessing that we have sinned, meaning acknowledging his law, we have a chance of pardon. And it's this confession that makes us partakers in the blood of the substitute. For a mediator to go into the most holy place in heaven, he must first have confirmed God's law's validation. To mediate, he must respect the requirements of the offended and convince the offender that they have sinned and need to convert. Yeshua said, If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. The law of the covenant had to be the same as the law in the most holy place in heaven, or else the mediator could not enter the sanctuary there with his blood. So in order to enter into the sanctuary in heaven, a mediator or priest would have had to have the blood of a substitute as he entered. This blood and the news that man repented was the grounds of reconciliation between heaven and earth. Only two times were blood sprinkled above the law of God. One was when the covenant was confirmed. That time the blood were to be mixed with water. The second time was in the most holy place, representing a most holy place in heaven. This time only blood were to be used and no water. When Yeshua died on the cross, we learn from from the witness standing there. But one of the soldiers with a spear 
pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Exactly what Jesus had said. He came to confirm a covenant, and the blood that was shed was the blood of the covenant. In a short amount of time, Yeshua confirmed his kingdom on earth by being obedient to the requests of the law. He became the sin-bearer or the sacrifice without blemish, a priest without blame, a mediator. He would be the link between man and God, the means of reconciliation. The priest could not enter the holy sanctuary without blood. Now Yeshua had blood from a sacrifice, so he could enter into the sanctuary in heaven. The law had been respected, the penalty for sin had been paid, and a covenant confirmed. Would heaven accept the means of reconciliation? Would the mediator be received? Had he been successful? After entering into the covenant, he could bring the blood into the heavenly sanctuary. And here, according to the book of Hebrews, his sacrifice is accepted. He is thereby allowed to serve as our defender or priest in the trial there. The Bible tells a lot about Yeshua's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary. We also find it in a book, in the book of Revelation, as we will see in a later episode, where we will look at what the priest had to do once he entered the sanctuary. Looking into this will clear up why Jesus left us, and why he hasn't come back yet. All the answers are in the sanctuary and the law that Jesus claimed he came to fulfill. In fact, Christ dying on the cross is not a fulfillment of all the requirements of God. However, if his blood did go down on the mercy seat on the earthly ark, he did fulfill the law and the requirements for reconciliation, then he did confirm a covenant like Moses did. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause he is the mediator of a new covenant, that by, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first covenant, they which are called might receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. Whereupon neither the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has enjoyed unto you. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, this man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And John, who saw the blood and water come out of Christ's side, later said, And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. The blood from Christ's side, mixed with water, proved what event Christ was fulfilling, the start, not the end, the means to enter a sanctuary in heaven, not a fulfillment of the holiest in heaven. Not only did Jesus claim to sacrifice himself to become our priest or advocate, but he claimed that God himself had sent him, that God himself wanted to see us get a second chance, because God so loved the world. But the strictness of the sanctuary service shows us that, shows us that there is only one way to reconciliation, only one path has been opened to our salvation. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest, who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, and not man. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much 
Also, he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. In that he said, a new covenant he hath made the first old. The covenant entered into by the mediator Moses and the tabernacle on earth could no longer be a, the covenant we must obey, for we have a new high priest and a new mediator, and salvation can only be ordained through this covenant, through this perfect mediator. And uh, if all this is true, then the Jews crying or being upset in front of the wailing wall uh, feeling the loss of their temple and their sanctuary service. They need to look upward to find their priest and to find their sanctuary. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. My little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the probation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world, and hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. In later episode, we will look more into the work of the High Priest in Heaven, as written in Scripture, and more about the judgment that would take place there. However, in the next episode, we will talk about the Ark and wars. Has the Ark played its part to the full, or does it still have a war to fight?